It is my pleasure to make uh, today a presentation about the French Supreme Court. But let me start with a story. I was having some business in uh, 1997 in Washington, D.C., and I was introduced to uh, a lawyer uh, who was uh, practicing law before the Supreme Court. And uh, actually, uh, his name was John Roberts. As you know, uh, John Roberts was then nominated uh, by President Bush as an associate justice and then uh, president of the U.S. Supreme Court. And I was surprised that uh, he was kind enough to be interested in the French uh, Supreme Court. Some years later, I gave a lecture at Yale Law School on uh, the same topic, uh, Supreme Courts, myth or reality in France. And I was also surprised to see that the students were really interested in the topic. This is why today I decided to make that short presentation. To make it simple, let's keep three dates. 1790, 1799, and 1958. 1790, we should talk about la Cour de Cassation. Under the monarchy, the French had uh, 15 local courts, which were uh, both a part of the judiciary and also legislative bodies. We had problems with these courts. We had actually two issues. The first one is that they were political and struggling all the time against the, the power of the king. And the second problem is that uh, the jurisprudence of this course was not the same. You had different outcome if you were in Rennes, Paris, or Aix-en-Provence. At this time, we also had uh, uh, a Conseil des Parties, which was a part of the king's council. And uh, that uh, section of the King's Council was qualified to void the rulings from lower courts. Then came the idea of separation of powers. I have to remind you that uh, the founder was French, my compatriot uh, Montesquieu. And also, at the same time, came the idea of equality under the law. For these two reasons, uh, the power of the parliaments and the idea of equality under the law, the French decided to uh, establish one Supreme Court named Tribunal de Cassation and then La Cour de Cassation. Since that time, we have in our country one Supreme Court for the judiciary. It is one court only it is one jurisprudence, it is one Supreme Court which is respectful to the government. The Cour de Cassation uh, uses a technique named la technique de cassation, cassation control. It means that the court does not review the case itself, but it reviews the ruling from the lower courts, the Court of Appeals. The Court de Cassation Review is about motivation of uh, the rulings of lower courts and also the issue of enforcement or interpretation of the law. The Court de Cassation works with a special body of lawyers qualified to plead before the Supreme Court. And these lawyers are the ones who uh, draft, uh, present, and plead what we call les moyens de cassation. The, the means to, uh, for the Cour de Cassation to control the rulings from lower courts. Today, the Cour de Cassation is made of about 200 judges and 60 advocate general. Let's go now to 1799 and say a few words about le Conseil d'État. Napoleon Bonaparte is uh, the premier consul, is not an emperor yet but he remembers uh, the uh, issues of uh, former French parliaments. And he also remembered Le Conseil des Dépêches uh, in the King's Council. 
From this, uh, he decided to establish Le Conseil d'État. Le Conseil d'État with uh, two missions. The first one was to advise the government on uh, bills and rules. And the second was to solve disputes between the people and the administration. From 1872, the Conseil d'État became a, a real court, independent court, making a balance between uh, uh, the government power and the rights of the people. Today, in 2020, the Conseil d'État has still these uh, two functions, advising the government and judging the administration as a Supreme Court. Le Conseil d'État had a very essential place during the COVID-19 crisis. Le Conseil d'État issued about 150 opinions to prevent attempts against the fundamental rights of the people. Le Conseil d'État is made of about 200 uh, uh, judges. As a supreme judge, uh, the Conseil d'État is able to review the rulings from lower courts, and in a way, he's doing about the same job than la Cour de Cassation. But also, uh, the Conseil d'État is advising the government on rules and uh, bills. The members of the Conseil d'État are both civil servants and judges. They are really independent and impartial, and they do follow. Uh, the fair trial, the rule of due process. The lawyers uh, who plead before the Conseil d'État are the ones who plead before la Cour de Cassation. 1958, le Conseil constitutionnel. It is uh, the Supreme Court of the French to deal with constitutional issues. The Conseil constitutionnel was established by the Constitution of the Fifth Republic. It is made of nine members, nominated by the president and also by the chairs of our parliament, chamber and senate. They are nominated for nine years. At the very beginning, the Conseil Constitutionnel was to play a role of regulation between uh, powers, between the branches of powers. The French do not like very much the idea of having judges making a review of the law. Why? Just because we had to fight monarchy and we did it through the sovereignty of the law. This is why for a long time we did not have real control, real review of the laws. But in 1971, with the famous ruling Liberté d'Association, the Conseil Constitutionnel made its like Marbury versus Madison. The Conseil Constitutionnel decided to extend its review to fundamental rights from the 1789 Declaration and also from the 1946 Preamble. In 1974, a new amendment was brought to the Constitution to make possible filing from members of the parliament and not only by the president and the prime minister. And then in 2008, and we have to thank Nicolas Sarkozy for this, and also Robert Banater, who did this before, who had the idea before, we established la question prioritaire de constitutionnalité, which is very close to the constitutional review which does exist in the U.S. Today, the Conseil Constitutionnel is doing ex ante review and ex post review with the question prioritaire de constitutionnalité. So the Conseil Constitutionnel became a real Supreme Court. I think we should move to three directions regarding le Conseil Constitutionnel. The first thing to do would be to remove former presidents uh, of the French Republic who are so far members of the Conseil, even if they do not stand very often uh, in the court. The second reform would be to improve the confirmation process, to make it more transparent 
for the nomination of the members of the Conseil Constitutionnel, a kind of confirmation process as it does exist in the US. And uh, finally, third reform, we should give the Conseil Constitutionnel the power to select its own cases and not like now, where people have to go through the Conseil d'État or the Cour de Cassation before getting the case to the Conseil Constitutionnel. So are the French Supreme Courts. They look like our country, they look like our history, diverse, sophisticated, and beautiful. <laughs>